neural tube defects is the topic, also abbreviated NTDs. And uh, neural tube defects are defects involving the brain, uh, the spine, and the spinal cord. And these uh, defects are quite unfortunate and quite tragic. Um, they can happen um, in utero, and uh, oftentimes they can lead to a fetal death. And there's two uh, in particular that are the most common types of neural defects. There's spina bifida and there's anencephaly. Anencephaly is just referring to the fact that most of the brain or, and skull has not developed. So this is uh, incompatible with life and the fetus uh, uh, basically is stillbirth or uh, basically is dead upon birth. Um, spina bifida essentially means that part of the spinal cord is protruding. So if this is the baby's back, uh, there's a portion of the spinal cord that actually protrudes out and uh, needs to uh, obviously be uh, surgically repaired. So those are the two most common type of types of neural tube defects. Now, why does this happen? Well, basically the etiology of neural tube defects involves uh, folate deficiency. Folate, also known as folic acid. And there's a lot of embryological uh, reasons for this, uh, but I'm not going to go into all the detail because that's embryology. But this is by far the number one uh, reason and most commonly tested on exams. There's other reasons as well that a, a woman can have a uh, baby with a neural tube defect. Um, another common cause is diabetes in the mother, uh, obesity in the mother, and the smoking, cigarette smoking as well. So these are some of the reasons a, a woman can have a baby with a neural tube defect. Now, the uh, diagnosis is done prenatally, of course, and it's done by measuring certain markers in the maternal uh, uh, blood or amniotic fluid. Now, the maternal serum is tested for something called alpha fetoprotein. And this is a very common test and very important test. It's abbreviated MSAFP. And if this is elevated, in particular around 16 to 18 weeks, um, it's a very uh, troublesome sign and good predictor that there are indeed neural tube uh, defects or defect in the in the fetus. There's two other tests that can be done that involve testing the amniotic fluid. So this one involves the maternal serum and then the next two that I wanted to discuss involve the amniotic fluid and these are important to remember. The first one involves testing the level of the alpha fetoprotein in the amniotic fluid. And the second one involves measuring the level of acetylcholinesterase, which is an enzyme, acetylcholinesterase, sometimes abbreviated ACHE. So those are the tests. Maternal serum alpha fetoprotein, amniotic fluid alpha fetoprotein, and acetylcholinesterase also from the amniotic fluid. Now, prevention, this is probably the most important point of the topic or video. There's three categories, basically. Um, the first is, if you have any woman who may become pregnant, she is a childbearing age, then it is recommended that she receives 0.4 milligrams of folic acid daily. And remember, she's not pregnant. She's not even pregnant yet. But because she's of childbearing age and may want to get pregnant, this is recommended as a daily vitamin supplement. Now, if she is pregnant, then they recommend that you increase the dose to one milligram of folic acid per day. Now, if you have a woman who had a child previously with a neural tube defect, 
a, a prior pregnancy with a neural tube defect, then they re recommend increasing it to four milligrams of folic acid daily. So in particular, what you really are looking at is a, all women of childbearing age should receive 0 0.4 milligrams of folic acid daily, and they should continue this for the first three months of pregnancy. Um, but if a woman had a prior baby with a neural tube defect, then they should basically be on a very high dose, which is four, four milligrams. So let's get into the clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. A 40-year-old woman, G1P0, presents to her OBGYN for prenatal care. She's at 18 weeks gestation. She has a BMI of 37, uh, diabetes mellitus, for which she takes a sulfonylurea. She is concerned about her pregnancy because of her age and her self-admitted poor nutrition and dietary habits. The OBGYN orders a panel of tests. The most concerning test result shows an elevated maternal serum alpha fetoprotein level. Which of the following abnormalities has the fetus most likely developed? Now, you have to remember that uh, the neural tube defects can occur or develop very early in pregnancy. They can uh, occur in even the first month. So, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but definitely, if this uh, value is elevated at 18 weeks, she definitely has uh, most likely a, a fetus with a neural tube defect. And of these, the one that is a neural tube defect is anencephaly. Uh, next one. 36-year-old recently married woman uh, comes to your office for routine gynecological examination. Uh, she tells you that she has been regularly, generally good health since her last visit. She has no noteworthy past medical problems, has never been pregnant, and is currently not taking any medications. She takes a calcium tablet daily and asks you whether there are any other vitamin or mineral supplements she should be taking. Which of the following recommendations is most appropriate? Well, this is a woman that is uh, recently married and she may become pregnant. So it's recommended that all, all women who are of childbearing age take about 0 0.4 milligrams of folic acid daily. So that would be choice A. Now if she does indeed get pregnant, she may uh, be advised to increase it to 1 milligram. And she's never been pregnant, so she certainly at this time doesn't need anything higher than 1 milligram. And just one final point is that this should be started now. It doesn't. She doesn't have to wait until she gets pregnant. So choice B is saying if she becomes pregnant, that's not true. And choice D is saying um, until she becomes pregnant, then stop. Well, that's not true either. So I just wanted to make that point clear that it, it should be started even before she gets pregnant. Next question. Which of the following patients is at increased risk of having a pregnancy affected by a neural tube defect? There's two correct answers. Well, this is just a very straightforward question that talks about etiology. And remember etiology, there was um, folate, folate deficiency, and then there was seizure medications, uh, there was um, obesity and smoking. So choice B for sure, and then choice C as well because uh, a prior, having a prior pregnancy with a neural tube defect definitely is a well-established risk factor for having a subsequent pregnancy with a neural tube defect. And then finally, a 25-year-old woman comes to the physician for annual physical exam. She has been feeling well over the past year. Her past medical history uh, are unremarkable. Patients' obstetrical history is significant for the term the vaginal delivery two years ago of a male infant with spina bifida. Examination is within normal limits. The patient states that she would like to try to become pregnant within the next few months and wants to know if she needs to start taking any vitamins. Which of the following supplements should, de should she take? Okay, well, this is a very special category because this is a woman that had a prior uh, pregnancy with a uh, 
unfortunate uh, result where the child had a neural tube defect. So, need, so, so she needs to bump up her folic acid to 4 milligrams a day. Remember, if there's no prior history, the recommendation is 0 0.4, uh, which is started prenatally, and then uh, continued for the, about the first three months of pregnancy. And then also, during pregnancy, it's advised that you take one milligram uh, of uh, folic acid. Now, this woman uh, basically needs a lot higher than one milligram and it's four milligrams but I guess the two answer choices that I could squeeze in are asking should she start taking it before pregnancy or should she start taking it when she gets pregnant well the answer is always to start taking it before pregnancy so preconceptionally so the answer is eight